All right, hello everybody, welcome back to another edition of the Arctic Pauper Show. I am your host, Arctic Ghost, and this week I am bringing you Bugtron. Uh, Leroy B, I believe is his name, um, is the person who's been winning with this deck the most in leagues. I recently uh, top aided um, Tiny Tim's Pauper Championship on Sundays over at Gathering.com. His first one I got top eight, and then the second one, this most recent one, I got second to Mikey Riru. Uh, Mike Rue will admit with his Cold Death of Boros deck he got a little bit lucky. And with the week before I lost to Affinity and Burn, but I beat Affinity and I beat Burn uh, these past two weeks. So, you know, <laughs> crap just happens. Uh, the way this deck wins is it combines Demonic Wall and Ghostly Flicker. Combo everybody should know very well. And Dendrova Horror. This is one of the new cards from MM3, arguably, to some people, the best common in that set. And what you do is you bounce all of your opponent's permanents and make them discard all their cards. The cool thing is you can bounce tokens, and the tokens will go away forever while also, um, while also uh, having to discard a card, which is pretty cool. Uh, one thing to note, though, is there's no graveyard hate. In main decks but there are cards that remove cards like journey to nowhere and whatnot and i supplemented that by playing one echoing truth because one of the things i'm trying out is playing fierce empath so that i kind of have an early play an early blocker to chump with to get the the denrova horror and then i have some uh some sideboard cards to two to four that's one of the new things that people are trying uh you know so without further ado we'll Break the deck down piece by piece. It's it's not a control deck. It's more or less just an all-around tempo deck. You rely a lot on moments piece because you don't have any removal whatsoever. And uh, it's crop rotation, so it's kind of a turbotron deck. But you get to take advantage of cards like Polluted Mire and Bajukabog, which is really cool. So first up are the creatures, of course. You have Mole Drifter, Mnemonic Wall. Those are your standard Tron cards. And then Dendrova Horror, which is your big win condition. And then you have Fierce Empath to tutor for the Didn't Rove Horror to block early and to get your several cards. I have tried Seagate Oracle in the spot, and then I ended up cutting Seagate Oracle, and then I wanted to try Fierce Empath. If I was to cut Fierce Empath, I would just play two more Din Rove Horror. I would just go up to three. At this point, that's what I would do. Uh, looking at the spells for Counter Magic, you have Condescend, which I've grown very fond of in the way the Pauper format is now, because people are starting to play a few more expensive spells. And Prohibit, which is... Basically counterspell in this format, but it doesn't cost two blue, which is good. Uh, I used to play Exclude, like Leroy B did, but I've quickly uh, dismissed Exclude in this deck. It's just not needed at all. Uh, one tempo card I have is Echoing Truth to bounce cards like um, Journey to Nowhere and things like that. It also kind of helps because you can just keep on bouncing tokens over and over again, or um, with two mnemonic walls you can keep... You know, bouncing stuff back, and of course, moments piecing kind of like a fifth time. You have one old, really, really pet card of mine, which is Probe, which is actually a lot better than I took it for. Uh, it's either a really bad compulsive research, because you can't discard only one card, you don't have that option, but you can also mind rot your opponent for just two more mana, and obviously, mana in a Tron deck is just not hard to get, so. Uh, you have Forbidden Alchemy. Forbidden Alchemy is great in this deck because you don't mind cards going to the graveyard. In fact, there are cards that you would not you would want going to the graveyard so you don't have them in your deck to draw. And also, it digs really far to get you Tron, so it's kind of like having extra crop rotations while also being able to get you better cards. You have Mystical Teachings, of course, because Mystical Teachings is just broken in this format. Uh, in some ways, I really, really wish Mystical Teachings would just get banned in Pauper at this point, but not going to hold out for that. Then you have Moments Peace. I shouldn't have to explain this. It's for aggro matchups. It's what helps you stay alive and what pisses everyone off. Pulse and Rasa, because it gets you back uh, not only creatures, but Tron pieces and it gains you six life, which is very relevant. And then, of course, Crop Rotation. Your big tutor card. Either gets you Tron, gets you more blue sources, like uh, Shimon Grotto, etc. Or gets you Bajukabog to remove graveyards, or gets you more Mar to put cards back on top of your library. Uh, the other thing is, this is a Bugtron deck, so you do actually need color black to win the game. So having Polluted Mire and Bajukabog actually do help. And, uh, yeah. Then there's Ghostly Flicker, if I didn't mention it, because I shouldn't have to. You already know what this card is. Then for the artifacts, you have one Expedition Map, which is the fourth crop rotation. That's really just what it's there for. And then you have Demir Signet and Simic Signet, instead of cards like 
pr prismatic um, what's it called prismatic lens these are just better just because they color fix better and they're kind of mana acceleration in that way and then of course prophetic prism because what Tron deck is complete without prophetic prism and then you have the Tron lands you have two islands and four Thornwood Falls you don't really want that many lands coming into play tapped uh, actually <laughs> Now that I think about it, I'm going to change these out for Unhinged Islands, because that's how precious this deck is to me, even though I do love my Lightning Islands and my uh, Snow-Covered Islands. And you have one more Tremire to get back cards like Mnemonic Wall and Mole Drifter. When you have Crop Rotation set Pulse Marasa, uh, or Dune Rover Horror, or you have Bajuka Bog to remove cards against like Tortured Existence, Teachings, Delve Decks, anything that you may even conceive. So that's the whole deck. Uh, main deck wise and the sideboard the sideboard is pretty cool you have circle protection blue which has actually become a lot better in the format now with how many blue creature decks are running around like delver just is is so popular now blue red delver uh white blue delver blue black delver just everything circle protection red because uh to hell with burn and a tog and fling one rare revelation because you need a way to destroy enchantments one standard bearer to have a kind of silver bullet Yes, you can't search for it, but you only need one in this deck. You really only need one. I have survived on one. You just need to draw it. Having two copies, I think, in your deck is so minuscule, I think you just want one, so that doesn't take up too much room. Two Dispel against Control decks, although I think I might go back to playing the third that I'd already had. Uh, you have one Hydro Blast just as a quick Silver Bullet Counterspell or Destroy Target Permanent. Pyro Blast for really the same reason. You have one Resounding Scream, which is actually quite cute. Uh... Not only do you get to cycle it at the end of your opponent's turn and make them discard two cards at random, you get to him to Tarok them, you also get to draw a card. So, so far I'm liking it. I like it a lot. And you have Whale of Nim. Uh, it's just, really, it, it's just a more versatile electricery. That's really all it is. It just happens to be that. Also, having less colors to rely on is uh, really helpful. Then you have Shattering Pulse instead of one Ancient Grudge. I'm trying this out so far. I'm a little indifferent. And then you have the Silver Bullet Creatures. You have a second in Rover Horror, just in case. You have a Wretched Griff, uh, which can win the game on its own, actually. This the combo from uh, the Mono Green Tron deck, which is Go Fierce Empath into Wretched Griff. And then you have one Fanger Marauder. Now, yes, I don't have... I only have one artifact that goes to the graveyard, but this is against Affinity. Uh, it makes a Tog really bad. So that's basically what's there for. I don't know if it's going to stay. It's Actually, it's also really good against, like, Kaldotha Rebirth, because... Um, Sorry, I'll the red because you can bring in Shattering Pulse and just for five mana gain five life a turn. But it's it's a lot better than you, than it looks, I think. So that's just how it is. So uh, yeah, one thing I will warn you about this deck is it's not an amazing deck. It it can be beaten. It's not overly powerful in my opinion. Uh, it does take long. It I have definitely run down to less than one minute on the clock when I'm trying to win. So do keep that in mind. This is this deck would be a hell of a lot better in paper uh, than it would be on Magic Online because you wouldn't have to go through so much clicking and tapping, etc., etc. So it's kind of that. But um, but yeah. So I'm going to take this deck into a couple of test matches, show you how the deck runs. Uh, I have won with this deck. I've gotten two top eights with it in a very competitive tournament. So just figured I'd let you know. No, I'm sorry. Um, oh, hold on a second. Uh, so yeah, I I did not get I did not get second this past week. It was the week before, so it was two weeks ago. Mikey Rue didn't even play this past week, and I played Coldotha Boros and got my butt handed to me. But uh, that's neither here nor there. So, thanks for checking out the deck tech. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I look forward to bringing you the matches. So stay tuned, and thanks for watching.